Hey everybody, I'm Megan Hatcher Mays, Director of Democracy Policy at Indivisible, and welcome back to another edition of Impeachment Daily, the only regular impeachment recap program that matters. Impeachment Daily exists to demystify the impeachment process and let you know how you can stay involved in this fight. Today, we are going to be talking about a gentleman by the name of Bill Barr. He's the Attorney General of the United States, and he is really up to some really wild, like, Carmen Sandiego style antics. Uh, and we're also going to be talking about some intriguing new witnesses in the impeachment inquiry who are testifying today. So let's get right into our first segment, which is called, oh, mm, what just happened? Where we recap what we know. Well, as you know, Donald Trump has regularly treated the Attorney General of the United States, who runs the Department of Justice, as his own personal lawyer ever since he was sworn into office. Now, that is not great, since even though the Attorney General is nominated by the President, uh, the Department of Justice and the Attorney General are supposed to be independent of the President. So, but you remember, Trump, of course, was furious at Jeff Sessions, his former racist Attorney General, for recusing himself in the Russia investigation, because his expectation was that Jeff Sessions would be like his personal lawyer slash fixer, who would help him escape accountability, just like his old New York lawyers slash fixers who he used to work with back in the old days when he was just a baby little corrupt fraudster of a businessman. That's bad. Well, now he's turning to his current racist attorney general, Bill Barr, to do the same thing. We actually haven't talked much about Bill Barr on Impeachment Daily, and I would normally show you a photo here, but our printer <laughs> is sick of printing out photos of Trump's henchmen. But Barr has been a pretty will, uh, willing participant in Trump's increasingly bonkers attempts to invent new and unhinged conspiracy theories. So for example, Barr undertook what's called an administrative review of the investigation into Russia's interference in our 2016 election. That's the Mueller investigation to uncover the origins of why this inquiry was opened in the first place. I mean, we all know it was opened in the first place because Trump is a big time criminal, but of course Trump has been claiming for years that the Russia investigation was opened at the urging of his political enemies. Remember, he used to attack members of Mueller's team for being crazy Democrats or whatever, um, and Trump also called the Mueller investigation treasonous, ooh, uh, a hoax, and like a huge political scandal, totally unfair to him. And he basically invented this entire conspiracy theory around it, which is that the deep state, which is made up of former Obama administration officials, I guess, have all been plotting to take down Trump's presidency. So, so Barr's administrative review of this investigation was a signal to Trump that he was willing to legitimize Trump's conspiracy theory that he is the victim of a widespread partisan political plot. Uh, the administrative review, which is insane, but it started at pretty low stakes though. Um, the prosecutor in charge of it was mostly just reviewing documents, but it got worse last month in October when the administrative review shifted into a full-blown criminal inquiry which means that Bill Barr could theoretically bring criminal charges against his own people, lawyers at the Department of Justice or other intelligence officials who were involved in this investigation. This is cuckoo bird because there's no indication here at all that a crime was committed when this investigation was originally opened. Even worse, really even scarier, is that it seems like Trump is using the Department of Justice through Bill Barr to go after his political enemies. Democrats that he thinks are after him. And Bill Barr has been all too happy to comply with these insane requests. Like he even went full on like Carmen San Diego. There's my hat. Uh, he was like jetting off to Italy and other cool European locales. And he's trying to compel foreign intelligence officials over there to get involved in this wacky like little Russian conspiracy theory. I wasn't there, but I assume that the response was like, ciao, man, we don't want any part of this. So Bill Barr is willing to do all of that, but apparently he drew the line at holding a press conference that would have absolved Trump of any wrongdoing in his phone call with President Zelensky of Ukraine. I guess Trump wanted him to go on TV and just say, Trump is innocent. He, nothing about this was illegal and nothing bad happened here, but Barr was like, oh, I'm not gonna do that. In fact, he distanced himself from this whole thing. 
and I guess was just like, I will go back to Italy though. Just do some more deep state subterfuge over there. I don't know why this press conference, this televised press conference was a breaking point for Barr. I find it interest, interesting that he distanced himself from the phone call pretty quickly. Uh, like even he was like, well, there was no campaign finance violations, but uh, uh, okay, bye. <laughs> and also I didn't have anything to do with this. I don't want to give Bill Barr any credit here. He is still running DOJ, like the president's personal law firm, and he's not a good guy. But I think that this shows, the fact that he didn't want to do this press conference shows that what happened on that call was really, really bad. Like he's off investigating this crazy deep state stuff, but the thing that actually happened, the illegal bribe, is real and it's bad. So that leads us to our next segment, which is of course called What is Happening? Where we talk about what's happening. Now, as you know, the House is in recess this week, but the committees investigating Trump are still here in DC hearing from witnesses. And today they are hearing from a woman named Jennifer Williams, who is a member of Mike Pence's national security staff. Now Williams has expertise in Eastern European and Russian relations. Uh, and the White House, of course, tried to prevent her from testifying at all because she apparently has some additional details on Trump's call with Ukraine. But the committees ultimately subpoenaed her and, you know, forced her to come in and tell them what she knows. Very bad for everyone involved. Like, can we just recap? Trump did it. He then admitted it to all of us. And then all of his employees, including now Mike Pence's employees, are all confirming that he did it. Good Lord. Good Lord. So what are we gonna do? We are gonna text impeach to 97779. We will connect you directly with your representatives. You can go to impeachnow.org. It's still recess for the next few days. You can RSVP for events or register your own event to go talk to your member of Congress. If you have a Republican member of Congress, keep calling, keep calling them. This is very, very bad. Many crimes are occurring here. Uh, and of course, our big mass mobilization the night before the impeachment vote. Uh, you can go to impeach.org and you can pre-register for an event. And as soon as we know the date of the vote, we will email, text, send you a fax, and we can rush out into the streets. So go to impeach.org and sign up. Thank you for tuning in to Impeachment Daily, the only impeachment recap program that matters. See you tomorrow.